Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Talk Life. Today is a really exciting episode. I have a special guest. Her name is Demi Grace. She is an Afropop and R&B London-born singer that's performed with the Queen Bee herself, Beyonce, at the American Music Awards, among other notable performances such as Essence Fest, House of Blues LA, Webster Hall, and so many more. Demi's original music can be seen and heard on BET, MTV, Trace, Apple Music, and anywhere you stream your music. Her new album entitled Black Current is available now on all streaming platforms, so you have to make sure you give it a listen. In addition to performing, Demi is also a model. She's been featured in magazine publications such as Essence, Vogue, and Cosmopolitan. Most notably, Demi has made history as the first Black woman with locks to be featured in a national commercial for Pantene Gold. I am so, so excited to welcome Demi to the show. Hi, Demi. Hi. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Thank I'm you. I'm having a very cozy day. I was like, let me give London a little off the shoulder. I but love it. It. <laughs> It's giving log cabin. <laughs> I just feel like I owed you that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm so glad you met me here with that energy. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm having a very, um, I think I posted the other day that October has been such a rediscovery of self for me. And I like it. I really like it. I like you know? the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about you a little bit. You have some background overseas. You were born in London. Yeah. Were you there long enough for that culture to influence your music or anything else that you do creatively? Absolutely. I think um, a huge misconception, which Top Boy obviously helped out with that, but a huge, mm -hmm. a huge misconception about London is that there aren't any black people. And mm -hmm. um, the area that I grew up in London, it was just only Africans and, uh, and Asians, mm -hmm. um, specifically Indians. So I definitely grew up around traditional Nigerian music, um, traditional Indian music. Um, and I think that's definitely influenced, influenced my creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And it's really cool because I, I don't hear a lot about London and the cultural influences, despite my name. I've mm -hmm. never been or... Um, I love your name, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. I've always... Though I have had roommates that, um, two roommates actually that were from London in different phases of my life. So, but I never really heard them talk about the culture. So it's really cool to hear you talk about that, especially you being a musician and a singer. You know what I mean, I everybody brings their <laughs> culture to London. I think there are some things mm -hmm. that are traditional to the UK, but as far Got as it. London goes, it's everybody else's culture that's in London. Got it. So everyone just brings their their good stuff there. <laughs> I love that. It's kind of like here. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am loving your new album. I listened to it several times. Um, my personal favorite song, though, is uh, I'm OK. Yes. And in, Thank in you. The, I love that one. I love that one. In the lyrics, you say, I know I'm different and that's okay. Um, but I listen to everything, but that's my favorite. I know that that's not like the hit single, but personally, I really, really relate to that song. And I think when other people listen to specifically that one, they'll relate to that one too. But talk to me a little bit about this project, what people can expect to hear and experience experience when they listen, but also what the process was like for you preparing this um, and working on it. Yeah. Um, so Black Current, I, I really, first of all, I love that um, you love the song I'm Okay, because I know that there are so many people, especially in our industry, that do feel like they do things differently. Or maybe you grew up yeah. with a really tight knit um, uh, culture 
and community. And because of what you do, you feel different. You know what I'm saying? Because of how you want to position yourself, you feel different. So I really love that you took to that song because I know how personal that song can be. Like even for me who wrote it, like I cry when I listen to that song because I'm like, it feels like validation. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. And I think that's, that's what people will get from this album. There are so many different songs that just validate uh, feelings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even Clingy. Clingy is a very validating song because I know there are a lot of uh, girls that feel pressured to kind of, you know, live the city girl life. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep city girl score up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so I get, I get that. There's a lot of pressure to not uh, cling to your feelings and to not cling to anybody, a yeah. job, yeah. a relationship, a city. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean those feelings don't exist. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of validation um, of feelings is ha is is uh, is available in this in this project, and that's what mm -hmm. people should expect. Expect your feelings to be validated. Um, and as, as far as the process goes, I loved recording I'm Okay. Like if you listen to the beginning of that song, it's just so melodic and it just, you know, like it just felt so like, so when I was recording it, like it started with a lot of melody and ad lib and then, mm -hmm. um, and then I came together with the lyrics. I come, I usually come up with melody first and then I'll do lyrics. Um, and then to even further, uh, to even further explain the process, I come up with melody first, then hook, then verse. Um, yeah, so uh, that was my project with I'm Okay and pretty much the entire the entire album. I know I recorded Plot Twist last, even though it's not the last song. I recorded Plot Twist last. That was, I got I wrote that song in like five minutes. Um, but I recorded, I set myself up for like a 21 day, you know how there's a 21 day fast? Mm -hmm. I set myself up for like a 21 day recording binge where That's I literally- awesome. Yeah, girl, I forced myself to record for 21 days straight, even if it was a cover. I mm -hmm. just wanted to know what would happen to me as an artist if I pushed myself in that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Did you achieve so what you wanted to achieve in that 21 days? Or were you like, I need more time? Or I could have done this in 10 days? Like... No, I actually did a lot more than I even expected. Like there's still songs from that from uh, that 21 days that's not finished and that mm. didn't make the album, you know? Okay. So I, I did a lot more than I even expected to. I think that it helps that everything was locked down because I didn't really have an obligation to go anywhere. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it helped that everything was locked down. It helped that it was a home studio so I could literally wake up and record like, I have two mics. So I have one mic that's just, it has a stand. So, you know, you got to stand up and go record there. And then I have another, mm -hmm. another mic that just fits on top of my, uh, my MacBook that just allows me to record like from my bed. So I have like breakfast on the side and then, you know what I mean? <laughs> and have, like a little, you know, yeah, it was, it was really fun. Like I miss it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I miss it you know? So what's your favorite song on the album? I said mine, mine's okay. I'm okay. What's yours? Um, I really love Stay just because mm. of the vocal layering. Like Brandy is is a huge influence for me. And um, I listened to B7 and I was like, that layering was just underrated. I don't know if you've heard B7, but that mm -hmm. la that vocal layering, Brandy, she, I, I mean. Brandy. Oh. <laughs> she is everything. Yeah. Um, and I can, I now that you say that, I can hear that in You hear it now, right? You yes. <laughs> I love that. I'm glad that you mentioned that because that makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, speaking of influences, um, outside of Brandy, you also mentioned that you have some other influences like Janet Jackson mm -hmm. um, and Grace Jones. Talk to me a little bit about them as artists. What aspects of their artistry um, and music, do you really listen to and resonate with and say, oh, I love this. I want to I want to use something like this or I'm inspired by the sound or the way they do things. I think I want to start with Grace Jones being an influence because um, to me, Grace Jones is the epitome of a free black woman. Mm -hmm. um, and and the way she influences me is not even something that I think I know how to explain because um, there are things that she does that I'm still uncomfortable that I identify with. You know what I mean? Like um, I recently saw the woman King and I was super against it at first because 
Um, I really don't like how they push the narrative that dark skinned women are automatically masculine. So mm -hmm. um, I was like, I'm not gonna go see that. I don't wanna support that imaging. Imaging, yeah. I don't wanna support that imaging. Um, mm -hmm. But then I went to see it and I was like, oh, I, but I am, you know, I, you know, I am, I'm tough and I, you know what I mean? Like I, I do identify in these areas as well as I'm not going to do any spoilers for the film, but as well as, you know, other, yeah, I, uh, seen it yet. <laughs> I almost did it. I almost did it. I was like, oh, don't spoil it. as well as other portrayals I have in that. And I feel the same way about Grace Jones. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. The, she embraces all of her mm. and that makes me feel safe to embrace all of me. And mm -hmm. she takes, risks you know what i mean she takes risks mm -hmm. and she really comes off to me like someone who really follows her intuition you mm -hmm. know what i mean like follows mm -hmm. whatever is telling her to do whatever it is in the moment that's what she does mm -hmm. you know and i i have nothing but respect for people like that mm -hmm. i think um, it's special when you can resonate with someone else's authenticity that then helps you pull out the authenticity within yourself. It's not that it wasn't there. It's it's just a different way you can tap into it because you see how someone else did it. Absolutely. And that's how I feel about Grace Jones. I think when it comes to Janet, um, her stage presence has always been so fascinating to me. Um, okay. You know, she really takes her, her time on that stage. Mm -hmm. And to me, I come from a choir background. Okay. So anybody that fully embraces their solo moments on stage is going to fascinate me. Because I'm like, you know, when you come from a choir background, it's about it's about we. It's not about me. Mm. So people who are brave enough to embrace the me and I still appreciate and show that they appreciate the we. Beyonce does it as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by that. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then also with Janet, she's sensual. She's not raunchy. You know what I mean? Like, and and don't get me wrong, there is a lot of a lot of silliness and humor and fun in, in just being sexual. You know what I'm saying? But like, mm -hmm. I love that Janet is so sensual. Even now, you know what I mean? Her movements are just so. You know what I mean? Good. I yeah. love her. Yeah. And so I, I love that about Janet. Um, and I already, I already told you what I love about Grace Jones, but I love that about Janet, just really embracing the me part of the entire production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But without coming off like me, 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 me. She doesn't yeah. come off like that at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's clearly it's about, it's about her. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you mentioned you, you know, really focused in on those 21 days of recording. Um, during that time, was it just you or were you collaborating with other artists, writers? Um, what was that? What was that like? Um, it was for the most part, it was just me writing, arranging, recording myself. Um, mm -hmm. But I was pulling from producers, you know, all over the world. Um, one of the producers is from Greece. Another one is from South Africa. Another one is from Nigeria. Another one is from Ghana. Another one is from uh, New York, another one from Philly, you know, so I was pulling from a lot of different uh, influences. But as mm. far as my vocals go, definitely mm. just me. It was just me sitting with my voice. And it, it was my first time recording myself. So I, I didn't even know how to play with effects. Exactly. I didn't even know how to play with the feet. So I literally had to sit with my voice and get comfortable mm -hmm. with my voice. Like, hey, girl, this is what you sound like. Because I have a lot of I have a lot of tracks in my catalog that are auto-tuned and that are, you know, that are giving you the party vibe, you know what I mean? But with this album, it, I recorded it raw, you know? And if wow. you listen to the raw vocals, it sounds pretty similar to the album, you know what I mean? Because I had to sit in my voice and get comfortable mm -hmm. with it, you know? And now that you've done that, any other project or anything else you do after that, you've had that experience to now learn from and you know yourself, you know your instrument a lot better, you know what you wanna hear, you know um, the technical stuff now, that's that's so incredible and you should be proud of yourself for that. Yes, all the flowers, all the pats on the back. Yeah. What do you want people to know about you through your music? Um. I want people to know that I am a truth seeker and a truth teller mm. above all. So 
if you want to know about me, the best way would be listen to my music. Cause that, you know, I didn't grow up very expressive because I have two older sisters. So they did all the expressing for me. <laughs> and so okay. I'm still, yeah, like I'm still kind of like learning how to use my speaking voice, but my primary form of expression was music and poetry. So mm -hmm. if you want to, you will likely find it in my music, you know? I love that. And I think that's how most songwriters and artists do express themselves. That's where their safe place is. And then, you know, it's it's a, a circle that comes back around because when people yeah. listen to it now, that's their safe place because they're listening to you tell your story. So it really it really does come full circle. I mean, that was the biggest compliment when I first released the album was a fan had commented on uh, the, I, you know, I posted it on Instagram, fan had commented and said, um, it was me and a couple other artists that uh, when I, when they listen to my music, it makes them feel okay. Mm. You know, and I'm like, my voice, I had a little frog girl because I started to think about it, but that's really what it's about for me, you know, because that's, it makes me feel okay. So the fact that you got that same feeling from it just makes me feel like we're all so connected, you know? Mm -hmm. We are, and we're a lot more alike and need a lot more of the same things Absolutely. than, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you're going to make me emotional. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> That's what I love about music in general. It lives on forever. And no matter where you are or what you're doing, if, like like I said, my song is I'm okay. I'm like, I'm about to listen to that after we get off of here. Yes. And it's, you know, I love that about music where it's like you can be in a mood or you can need something. You know, you can always tell when you just need something. And yeah. um, I love that about music, but I, I especially love that about songs that really touch you and you can really feel something. Absolutely. And, and I feel that way about so many songs, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have, um, um, on my, on my Spotify, I have like so many playlists of songs that like through the decades have just yep. fed me the same exact way. So to be able to contribute that to anybody, I'm just super grateful, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. Same. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else that you're working on that people can keep an eye out on or you want everyone to support? Um, I think keep an eye out on, definitely keep an eye out for the um, the visuals for Black Current. Um, awesome. And then at the same time, I am trying my hand at, well, I don't want to say trying my hand at like it's like a gamble, but um, I am starting to get into producing. Um, so like TV and film, I mean. That's awesome. Well, you're gonna have to come back once that is in production and come talk to yeah. us about that. <laughs> yeah, right, because it's like a lot I can't talk about, but yeah. definitely getting into that because I love storytelling, so. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited mm -hmm. to hear about it, see it, all of the things. <laughs> Yes, me too. Awesome. Can you tell the viewers where they can stream your new project and keep up with where what you're doing, where they can find you on social media, on streaming platforms? Yes, you can stream my new project, Black Current, anywhere you get music. So that means Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, um, what else? Rattle off a few, I don't know. All, anywhere you get music. <laughs> Um, I set it up to where you can stream it everywhere. So you can find Black Current everywhere. You could find me on social media at I am Demi Grace. That is I A M D E M I G R A C E. Demi, I am so glad that you joined me. I am going to continue streaming, continue supporting, come Thank back you. anytime. <laughs> and I will send you that hot toddy recipe because you need it. Yes. <laughs> I need Thank that. You. <laughs> Thank you, Demi. I was so great having you and come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Demi Grace. Our episode will be on all streaming platforms and make sure you follow, support, and like all of her projects. Black Current is now currently out on all streaming platforms. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.